everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Herbalist Path, where we're on a mission to inspire a movement where there is an herbalist in every home again. And I'm really excited today, perhaps even giddy, uh, for my new guest I'm going to have on. And her name is Amanda Furby. She is the owner of The Herb Shop on Mississippi in Portland, Oregon. And The Herb Shop actually is the first herb shop, not hers, that I... Um, apprenticed at many, many, many years ago. So it's really exciting to sit and chat with Amanda and chat with somebody who knows what it's like to own an herbal apothecary. That, and she seems to be a lot like me and she loves to get outside and play and have tons of fun while simultaneously connecting with really killer plants. So thanks so much for being on the show, Amanda. I'm excited to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. This is exciting. Yeah, let me know if I missed anything in that intro. Sometimes I, I ramble on intros. And play. <laughs> nope, that was perfect. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Yeah, I love that you own the herb shop on Mississippi. I love that there is another one in that area. And I would love to know how that happened for you. Yeah, so um, a little bit of a leap of faith. Um, I was in North Carolina actually living when I had the epiphany that I needed to open an herb shop. And um, so long story short, I basically was, uh, you know, looking at different areas in the United States that catered to herbal medicine because I knew absolutely nothing about it. I mean, I think I knew three plants. I mean, I, I knew that it was an important thing and I knew that it was something that's culturally across the world has been here at, everywhere mm -hmm. um, and um, was our major, you know, medicine for so many years, but I didn't know that it was something that you could have a career in, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> totally. Um, so long story short, I found the herb shop online. Uh, the original owner um, opened it in 2005. And in 2010, I emailed her and said, hey, you know, I think I want to open a wellness property of some sort. Can I come talk to you? So I flew out and um, interviewed at the shop and, you know, told her my vision of what I felt like I wanted my future to look like. Um, and long story short, she offered me a job. So I packed up my stuff in North Carolina and moved out here in August of 2010 and started at the herb shop three days later. <laughs> so, That's yeah. awesome. Were you at the Hawthorne one then? I was. I was at the Hawthorne location in 2010 um, and, you know, started simultaneously with doing our internship as well as being an employee, as well as taking my background from design um, and the corporate world and basically going, oh my gosh, I see like so much awesomeness in this place and so much potential and, and growth. And I, like you want everybody to like know about herbal medicine and know that this is an option for your health. Um, and so it was a major crash course. <laughs> I felt like my brain was going to explode for about the first six months of being there because it was learning so much information. But at the same time, it was like this knowledge that this ancient knowledge that had been in, you know, in me at some point, maybe in a past life or whatever it was, and just soaked back in, you know, so it was like a big refresher crash course is the best way to put it. That's awesome. Yeah, JJ is a really wonderful person. And if you were there in 2010, I wonder if we actually crossed paths around then. I'm sure we did. Um, <laughs> Caitlin was my mentor. Oh yeah, Caitlin then. was my mentor. <laughs> she was so much fun. Mm -hmm. She, she um, she's great. And it, I didn't realize she went back to Minnesota. I want to say, and then came back and now has an herb shop in the Bend, Bend. area. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. is the name of that shop? Do you know? Um, it just changed names, so I'm not sure what it's called now, but um, but I'm sure it's amazing. So I need to get her on the show just because I was out at Brighton Bush last year or the year before, obviously not last year, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and ran into a few people working with her, and I had no clue. And like we're hanging out, having fun, having all these conversations, and then like two days later, we all make the connection and it was a really beautiful experience and exciting to hear for her and exciting yeah. for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Wow. That's so fascinating to decide I need to open an herb shop without like a real formal background, I guess you could say in herbalism. Um, that's yeah. Exciting. I mean, it literally hit me like a lightning bolt that it was like, you know, do not pass go, just go straight in this path. And my whole family thought I was crazy. They all are like, what are you doing? You're leaving this, you know, your architecture degree to go to like work with plants. What? But, you know, 11 years later, they finally understand and, and appreciate and totally like honor the work that I do. And that's really amazing. So that is great. Oh, what would you say is the most rewarding part about owning an herbal apothecary now that you've been? Oh, man. I mean, I think the thing that always comes back to me is just the amount that we're able to give back, you know, that they, I mean, there's so many people that come in and it, it really truly feels like a sacred space as far as like the amount of information that is given to us from customers and then, you know, in return, being able to turn around and help the community in a way, in whatever way we possibly can and, um, you know, and give back. I mean, it, it's this beautiful cycle that, that, you know, I feel like most herb shops can relate to and it is super important to be yeah. able to do that. Absolutely. I had my apothecary open from like a very short window of time. I learned a lot of lessons in business in that time. I do aspire to open it again, but even still as it's closed and I still operate my product line out of this location, there's not a day that goes by that somebody isn't trying to come in and buy some herbs from us or what have you, or coming in and thanking me or writing me letters of like, oh my gosh, when you created X for me, it helped me so much. And yes. that feeling is, is gold. It <laughs> you is. Know, you know, it's... People come to you at their wits end, you know, they're they're completely maxed out. They've gone through the system in a million ways and still have no answers. And, you know, like I, from my perspective, almost always start talking about food and wellness and lifestyle, even before I even get into herbs. But, you know, I'll never forget like, give this one story. This guy came in and I mean, he was just stressed, you know, like he, hadn't slept in three or four weeks, you know, and just, you could just see it all over his face. There was nothing that was helping him. And the very next day he ran into the herb shop. It was packed with people and he was just so excited. And he was like, thank you so much. I slept last night. And you're like, wow, that's amazing. That's so <laughs> awesome. You know, like you just yeah. like stop everything you're doing and are like, that that's why we're here you know like that's yeah. why we're here so absolutely I'm, I'm getting the chills as I hear you talk about that and I've had a lot of people also in the sleep department that are like holy moly I think that sleep is one of those things that people come to herbalists for might be one of the highest things I'd Take love time. to hear do you <laughs> do you agree or is yeah. it something else because I mean, I think that it is in the top five of things for sure. Like, and it definitely ebbs and flows, but you know, anything in the nervous system, whether it's stress and anxiety or sleep, um, you know, all of those things are so big. And, you know, as you've seen, I'm sure in the last year, like stress was high. And so <laughs> everybody wanted stress stuff. Everybody wanted immune stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, so those are definitely some big, you know, big topics that we, uh, talk about often at the yeah. shop for sure are you know stress and immune and adrenals and fatigue and yeah all of that so yeah big big things it's tough living in our society <laughs> you know that's that's what I chalk it up to like I definitely have a tea for sleep and for stress and I'm like could we just put this stress one in our water that'd be great yeah because um, <laughs> yeah. like we an can IV all pack. really use it yeah totally <laughs> yeah if you remember, and you don't mind, you don't have to, but do you remember what you gave that guy to help him sleep so well in one night's turnaround? Yeah, it was valerian actually. And so, and you know, again, as I'm sure you know, like valerian is like one of those herbs that you always have to like let people know like, hey, there's 1% chance that 
this might make you hyper. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's one of those. And we had gone through that whole conversation and he's like, I'll try whatever. And I was like, okay, you know, like, so I like to start with just one herb whenever you're working with people. So that way they can really feel the effects of that one herb mm-hmm. before really building like a solid blend out. So Yeah, I think that one herb perspective is really, really important. And as I go about like teaching people about herbs, like they immediately want to formulate. And I'm like, oh, you actually got to feel this herb and taste this herb and understand the way it works with your really unique body because all the plants are different and are going to have a different action or reaction to each person and um, to each condition within that person. So it just really gets complex. And I think that as, as herbalism can be simple in some facets, the more you get into it, the more complex it is. Um, Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And, you know, again, that kind of goes into teaching people to understand their own body, you know, like, whether, and again, I, I like to start with food and, you know, start with your food source and, and see, you know, what is it that you eat that really messes with your system or gives you a headache or makes your ears itch or, you know, makes you bloated, whatever it is. And, and herbs are exactly the same in our, in our internship program that we have now, we do a 30 minute meditation. And I tell every intern as they come in, you know, really, I want you to sit with one plant. I want you to sit with this plant. I want you to maybe drink some tea of this plant or do a tincture or even a flower essence if we have it, or look at the aromatherapy aspects where you ever pick up your phone or laptop or even a book. I'm like, I want you to just sit down and I want you to fill that plant you know, and then you start understanding things like different properties, like, is it cooling or is it warming? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, is it something that is going to give you a gelatinous feeling or is it super drying? You know, all of those constitutions and properties of plants is really how you start to understand a plant and if your body likes it or if it doesn't. So, yeah, I think that is a really important process. And I remember doing that at the herb shop myself um, and really learning a lot in that way of just taking that time. A um, couple of things. One, can I backtrack on my internship at the, at the herb shop and relate it to getting to know a plant and tell you a really funny story? <laughs> Yeah. So (laughs) when I was there, Caitlin was my mentor. And I remember one day I'm in there and every day I came in and had to do, had to, got to do a meditation with the plant and whichever plant I chose. And there was one particular day where Caitlin was working away and she had started talking about skull cap and she's like, oh, skull cap. I love it. It just goes straight to my head. And I was like, oh, straight to your head. Skull cap must make you really, really smart. And like (laughs) fast forward a little later and I'm going through clinical herb school and we're doing monographs on whatever plants we choose. And I decided I'm going to choose skull cap. That'll be great because then I'll be really smart for the rest of my herb school. <laughs> and, and I grab my books and I grab my tincture and I have a tea and like I've, I've got everything I can to really feel this plant. And I'm sitting in my backyard and I'm like starting to read about it and I take a little tincture of this skull cap. It's a beautiful, warm, early summer day. And I take the tincture and I'm just like, oh yeah, it's a nice day. It's so pretty out. (laughs) I just don't feel much like writing though. I probably really need to take more of the skull cap so it goes to my brain more. (laughs) So I do. (laughs) And I'm just like, yeah, it's nice. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, open a book and read about this plant. And and I open a book and I'm like, oh, (laughs) it goes straight to her brain and is sedating. Uh (laughs) And Caitlin's a very energetic being. So Mm -hmm. that was one of my fun experiences of actually like sitting and being with the plant. And I think it goes to show like today on the internet, there's so much information out there and not all of it is great information. As a matter of fact, a large portion of it is not. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you can go online and read like, oh, so-and-so said that skull cap goes straight to your brain. It makes you really smart. 
But if you don't take the time to actually interact with that plant, you're never really going to know what it does. Oh, absolutely. You know, and that also like kind of leads me to taking too much of a plant, you know, (laughs) I'm I'm like the queen of like accidentally taking too much of something. And I've learned a lot of really valuable lessons with I am guilty of that. (laughs) Yes. Well, and I think that is like our society and our culture that we think that we need more of things. Mm -hmm. And instead of just starting with like the basics, like you think, oh, one tablespoon of mugwort, like that's not that much. And the next thing you know, you're up all night having lucid dreams like crazy and can't get out of it. And you're like, maybe I should have only had one tablespoon of mugwort instead of two. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's great. Could you tell me another story about a particular plant where you were like, holy crap, I took too much of that? Yeah. Um, so I, and this wasn't even an internal taking of a plant. So like, I love to tell this story. Um, but we were at the shop and we were grinding poke root, mm. which as you know, is a low dose herb. Um, but our Vitamix at the time was you know, off gassing some of the powder into the air. And I had two interns that day and they both within like 10 minutes of grinding this herb, they both were like, I feel really bad. I think I need to go home. Like, I feel like I have a head cold and it just came on so fast and we were pretty close to closing. So I was like, yeah, like, just go ahead and get out of here. I don't want you to feel bad. Sent both of them home, finished up the day. And then about 30 minutes after I left there, I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I have a head cold. Like what is going on? And at the time, Dr. Curtis was working for the shop. And so I was like, Dr. Curtis, I have to tell you what happened. She's like, oh yeah, that's poke root. It was moving, it's a lymphatic mover. So it was moving everything out of your body. And then the next day I was totally fine. And so were the interns, but it was just like, wow. Plants are powerful. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) Like that was just like little particles in the air that were coming in. And, you know, from that day, it inspired me to eventually teach a class on poisonous plants, you know, and understanding the difference between like low dose and poisonous plants and how you can still work with many of them, even though they're, you know, in a low dose form or in, in a homeopathic, you know, form, but, you know, understanding that just because they're poisonous doesn't necessarily mean, you know, it's not powerful as much. Right. Yeah, totally. Um, do you teach that? Is that poisonous plants class available to people? Not yet. It's something that's going to be coming probably in this next year though, because I just recently last year had my first encounter with poisonous oak because <laughs> mm. I see this is the problem right the plants listen all the time like I think I need more knowledge on poisonous plants How can I get more <laughs> knowledge and sure enough I somehow managed to get into some poison oak last year and then almost to the day this year from last year got it again oh, no. and it was like okay all right I hear you I'm going to teach this class it's going to happen so in the very yeah. near future <laughs> yeah I was just on a hike last weekend out in the gorge and like just poison oak everywhere yep. um, and I was really attentive to be like hello my seven-year-old child see this plant don't yeah. touch it um yeah. so what'd you do what'd you do when you got poison oak because this is uh, a question I get all the time <laughs> yeah totally so I made a we have a blend actually that's called itchua that we created oh. for poison oak um and I took that and um, what I had at home was vinegar and I had our, our cacao face mask. And so, which is, you know, chocolate and clay basically. So I took all of those together and made a blend and just lathered it on me for, you know, it, it took a couple of weeks for it to really go away. Mm-hmm. But that, and then the classes herbal liniment seemed to like really help with like the cooling and, and getting all, all of that combined is what really got rid of that. Um, but it was a very, um, eye-opening experience and I mean I have a scar on my arm actually because it was so bad on the top of my arm so it's a reminder probably will be a tattoo someday I don't know but (laughs) yeah it's the beginning of art (laughs) yeah I love that story that's really really funny and painful all in one (laughs) not to laugh at your pain but at least it's a great learning lesson right it is you know and Rosemary Gladstar has talked about how I think it was poison ivy or poison oak. I can't remember which one now, but talking about doing like small doses with that and how, you know, your body becomes like, it builds up a tolerance with that. And 
I wouldn't necessarily recommend that to anybody like firsthand, but Rosemary has like so much experience in that and always a good source of information and knowledge. She's wonderful. I Mm -hmm. love meeting her. She's just got this beautiful fairy floating way about her. (laughs) She's so integral. She is just this little wonderful, you know, goddess fairy woman that just floats. She just floats. She is really wonderful. And she tasted my tea at one of the last Brighton Bush things she was at and she loved it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not a fangirl type of girl. But yeah. But at that moment, I was like, she likes my tea. (laughs) And I feel like Rosemary is the only person maybe on the planet that I feel like starstruck with every time I see her. And just like amazed that she remembers me every single time. Like, how do you remember all these people? (laughs) Lots of really great herbs that improve memory. Right? So true. So true. (laughs) Um. I want to touch back about the internships at your shop and find out how anybody could get the opportunity to do an internship with you. Yeah, absolutely. So we um, bring new interns in every month um, and it is a 12 week internship. Um, We've changed the hours slightly because of COVID and everything. So it's instead of being a four hour shift, it's a three hour shift. Um, And that way we can maintain our max capacity with employees and customers and things like that coming in. Um, But you can always call the shop or you can email us at the main email, um, which is info at the herb shop pharmacy.com. Or if you want a more direct email, we also have interns or internship.ths at gmail.com. Um, and so those are the best ways or pretty much if you talk to anybody, they'll link you up with getting basically you connected with me. And then we do a once a month orientation, which is currently via Zoom and go over kind of the basic foundations. Um, we ask for a letter of interest so that way we can kind of get an idea of, you know, what your skills are, what you want to learn from us, see if it's a good fit for us. Um, but we love having interns. I mean, it's such a blessing to have, you know, this fresh energy that comes into the shop all the time and everybody's knowledge is great. You know, it's, it's, even if you have no knowledge, like I did when I came into the shop, you know, like there's so many other foundational things within herbalism that are not just necessarily medicine making, you know, like it goes into astrology, it goes into farming, it goes into food and nutrition. And so there's so many avenues um, of knowledge that comes in that becomes really awesome paired up with, with herbalism. Totally. I think that's what I, one of the things I, I love about herbalism is how it can, you're, you never quit learning, you know, and there's always so many different directions in which you go. And it just sounds like such an excellent opportunity to do an internship at the herb shop. Tell us the address of the herb shop. Sure. It's at 3912 North Mississippi Avenue in Portland. So up in North Portland. It's such a fun little area. I can't believe how much that area has grown and It has. I mean, I've had this location going on seven years now and it has, I mean, I watched them take down the old furniture store that is where my shop is now Mm -hmm. and completely build everything out. And when we first opened, you know, it was mainly just like restaurants and bars on Mississippi and it has really evolved to this cool, eclectic, you know, super fun, you know, bar, restaurant and like retail, you know, location. Yeah. um, Which is really awesome. Yeah, totally. (laughs) That's great. That's Mm -hmm. so exciting. I wonder being an herb shop owner, you've got this endless amount of herbs available to you. If you could recommend one herb to people. (laughs) Well, that's always such a hard question. It's so hard. (laughs) (laughs) And I've been thinking about this and, (laughs) and I think, you know, the one plant that at this moment keeps coming up for me is dandelion because dandelion is everywhere and dandelion is not only nutritive but so great with you know the leaves and the root and um and making wishes you know like there's there's so many things that dandelion offers and it's so often overlooked as um a weed that we should just pull out of our yard and get rid of but yet you know it's food it's medicine it's magic it's all the things 
And I just want to bring awareness that people take note of their dandelions in their life yeah, um, and understanding it and understanding like how much, you know, how beneficial it can be, you know, for them. Yeah. Um, I, you know, often think that when things are growing in abundance, like our society needs them the most, um, you know, and there is abundance of them. So, you know, being able to take a few dandelions here and there is not going to hurt the population of dandelions most of the time. And mm-hmm. so that is, you know, something that is so obviously something that we all need to be aware of when it comes to like harvesting plants and, you know, taking food as medicine. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, so you talk about dandelion being great food and great medicine. What are some ways that somebody completely new to herbalism could use dandelion right now? Like what could they do? Yeah. Um, I mean, for starters, I would start with eating the greens and eating the flowers. And then, you know, if you're wanting to dive into it further, um, you know, the leaves are also so great for the kidneys and for, you know, water retention and things of that nature. And then of course there's the roots that go into like a blood purifier with your liver, you know, so if you're running hot, like it's a great cooling, you know, herb that can help out with, with, um, you know, with, with basically helping to cool down the body if, if you have inflammation or, you know, whatever it might be. I don't want to get in, like, throw too many, like, ideas. Off right. There. I was like, oh, we're, we're sticking with beginners. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I'm like, I don't want to dive too deep, but just an awesome plant, you know, and, and just starting by eating it is so important with the bitter properties that are in there. How would they eat it? in their salad or they could saute it or they could even make some pesto with it, um, which is one of my favorite things to do with dandelions and nettles, of course. Um, So I think that that is, you know, some really simple methods. Um, I also really love to do like a vinegar infusion with dandelions. Like I really have gotten very much into vinegar or oxymals, um, infusions. And I, you know, oftentimes I'll take all your basic spices, you know, like oregano and thyme and dandelions and make a beautiful blend. And then you can make it into a salad dressing or use it as a soup topper or whatever it might be. And I think that's been one of my most valuable and beautiful lessons getting into herbalism is really like how do we incorporate food into our herbs and and into our regular food? So it's not necessarily like I need to take my medicine. It's like, Oh, it's part of my, my ritual and part of my, my diet and who I am. Yeah. It's really so true. And there's like our common culinary herbs, there's so much medicine in all of those. And I think it's forgotten about in our society. Um, and that's really a shame because there's some of our, it's really funny as you like look into the history of it and cooking and what herbs were used as preservatives and, and how that all melds together to be some really powerful and delicious medicine. Yes, that is <laughs> to this day, one of my biggest dilemmas whenever I divide up the store as far as what our bulk herbs are versus yeah. our culinary herbs. Oh my gosh, it drives me crazy because I'm like, but it's medicinal too. I don't know. You know, it just becomes this mind boggle in my head as to how I should organize things. Maybe go culinary herbs, but they're yeah. medicinal too. <laughs> Yes, exactly. you know, and then just put what people typically buy in the grocery stores, spices. Yep. And that's kind of what we do, but it's just so funny to like, in my brain, I've, it kept me up at night, like <laughs> literally going, but it's still medicinal. Is it really culinary? You know, like just yep. the simple things. <laughs> <laughs> it can so much be the simple things. I love mm-hmm. that. I love mm-hmm. that about it. Hey, you talked a moment about bitters and dandelion. Do you want to tell people what the heck bitters do? Because nobody wants anything bitter in their mouth these days, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, bitters are amazing. You know, it's basically going to help with stimulating our digestive tract that keeps everything moving along and keeps, you know, our whole body really regulated. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, there's, luckily there are so many bitters out there. You know, you can obviously do dandelion. There are varying levels of bitterness with with plants and depending on what you actually need you know I feel like bitters you know they they hit your palate of your tongue and then they kind of go through your body and get you ready for digestion you know which is where so much of our society it gets 
stuck because we're constantly just like eating, eating, eating. Literally eating. stuck. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. like everything's stuck, right? That's why we have so many problems and, and, you know, not only in our digestion, but it obviously escalates into so many other health issues across our society with how we eat and what we eat and all that kind of stuff. But just taking a few bitters before you know, you know, you're going to eat that pizza or whatever it is, you know, yeah. then that can really help to like move that process along and regulate things and keep things moving. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that explanation. Yeah. Just in case anybody was wondering, like, wait a second, I don't want anything <laughs> better, but no, you really do. Yeah. You know, and I also get really, um, I, I mean, I love the history behind like sugar and, and bitters, you know, in our society and going like way back to the industrial revolution when we had all these sugars that came into like all the processed food and all that kind of stuff and how bitters got removed from our food palate, right? And yeah. so now there is this awakening to like remove that and the more bitters you have, the less you crave sugars and the less yeah. you want those sugars in your life or need those sugars in your life. And that is awesome. <laughs> yeah, because sugar is the devil. It so is. I mean, it's talk terrible. about serious brain fog and Ugh. like, you know, it just and it's so addictive. Well. It is. I mean, it's it's worse than heroin, that's for sure. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and those darn food manufacturers knew it. <laughs> And, you? Yeah. and I mean, it's crazy to watch them cater it to, you know, children in every capacity. And, you know, it's, it's really hard to keep sugar away from children in this day and age without being like the bad person, you know, and it's like, yeah. you know, really learning to introduce sh other types of like healthier sugars, like from fruit or from honey or maple syrup or whatever, versus like, Here's yeah. sugar. So. My child did not have any refined sugars until she went to preschool. Yeah. <laughs> and sure. then it was like Halloween and my daughter comes home with Kit Kats and I'm like, what? <laughs> and then Nana was like, oh, floodgates are open. Here you go. And I'm like, wait, 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 you guys. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> this is a real thing. I know you may have like have put tons of sugar in your body and you're still alive, but that doesn't mean you're healthy and alive. Like, okay. Yeah. Um, well, and I think for those beginning years of life, like it's so important because, because of the brain fog you get from sugar, you know, like they're in that fundamental development stage where they're learning so much mm -hmm. and having clarity is really important. I mean, yeah. all through life, it's important, but like, right. especially through those, especially in those. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Okay. You have an herb shop. I bet you also have books in your herb shop. We do. And I love herb books. If you could tell my background's like a, yes. a quarter of my herb book collection. <laughs> if that, uh, or, um, if you were to be able to recommend one herb book, another really challenging question, what would you recommend to people? Um, I think it's always great and myself included to start with Rosemary's books. Her yeah. books are so simple to understand and it really gets the wheels turning in your head as to like what you can do and how you can do it. Um, and I mean, again, I always feel like it's my, my cute little grandmother that's reading to me and, you know, telling me and explaining these. So I think that any, really any of her books are such great, like fundamental foundational books to get started with when it comes to starting in herbalism yeah she's really great there's some of my first books for sure so perfect kind of an easy answer on that one a little bit easier than the one plant thing <laughs> yeah totally well I mean and mine are very well loved like you go through the pages and there's stuff spilled everywhere you know or whatever so they've been well used and well loved awesome I love that that her books are fantastic they're a really 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 great starting point and even today after however many years I've been immersed in the herbal world I still love her books so yeah. timeless for sure um I want to go back to talking about your shop and I heard a little word that you are having some new products come available at the herb shop in oh. Portland and they are likely to be significantly better formulations than what you see in all the hype world of this particular plant you're going to use <laughs> well I think Wonder if you can tell me a little of that <laughs> yeah I mean so we've spent the last four and a half years completely 
completely redoing our product line, um, which has been really awesome and wonderful to get in there and do all those things. And it's not just me that does it. I want that to be like well known that it is some, it is a collective. I operate my shop, you know, as if it is a collective unit and everybody that wants to be involved with things like formulation is. So that's been really beautiful and special to like see and to incorporate and all those things. Formulating but, is one of my favorite things to do. Oh, me too. Like, it's I so totally much fun. It. <laughs> yes, yeah. it is. You feel like the mad scientist there with everything. Um, but with that being said, I have, we have started the journey of introducing CBD into some of our beloved products at the shop. And so we will spend this whole year um, launching a new line of CBD products that will be beautifully formulated with, you know, the, the herbs that are good to um, relate to CBD that are good for, you know, being in corporation, you know, with CBD and making that formula really valuable. Yeah, that's awesome. Because uh, that's really exciting just because there are really, there's so many crap CBD companies out there. And I think, you know, CBD, that plant, the whole cannabis plant is amazing and chock full of all kinds of medicine that really dances well with so many other herbs. So it's a, it's a fun little area. I'm glad to hear another herbalist doing great work in that. Department. It is, you know, and it's really special to get to work with this plant that's had like all this hype, but bring awareness to the, the world that there's so many other plants too that like work really beautifully with CBD as well as like on their own. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think that, you know, within most of the CBD companies that are out there, there's not really an herbalist perspective to those products. And so to be able to take that, to formulate that, Mm -hmm. to use the full plant, you know, like that's how we are trying, that's what we're doing with our our products is actually using the plant versus taking an isolate powder or taking a distillate, you know, like that's like, cause there's so many properties, like you say, that come from that plant. It's not just this one thing that's been extracted and to me, like, that's a different thing than what we do in herbalism. Like, we want to work with the plants. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful process. So that's exciting that that's going to be available. Um, and it'll be available in your storefront. Maybe later down the road, it'll be available online. Correct. Yes. Um, as of right now, we have um, just a simple oil base. And we also have an alcohol extraction and then in the next week or so, we will have four new oil blends that you Yay. can use topically. Um, and then we'll have lots of other stuff that's coming. So exciting, super, super fun. And you have other really exciting things for people that maybe want to start learning how to make their own medicine word on the street. Yes. Tell me more about that. (laughs) So when I got into herbalism, I just fell in love with making products, you know, like for me, again, not really having much of a medical background or understanding of the body and the systems. Like I really fell in love with skincare products. You know, I was like, I want to know how to make everything. I want to know how to do anything that goes on my body, which then obviously escalated into anything that goes in my body. Right. Um, and from that kind of birthed this idea of uh, make your own series. And so the make your own product series is 10 classes that are extended over a three or four month period, depending on when they're being taught. Um, And it teaches you everything. It teaches you all the basics from tincture making to skincare to food as medicine and everything that you can imagine in between that we, we go over and touch on. And so we will be doing that in starting in September of this year. Um, we took a little break with COVID, but now we're getting back to it. And so it will be an online platform. And you also have the option of us shipping your pro- those products that we make in class to you, um, which will be really exciting and fun for you to have that hands on. Super fun. That sounds really awesome. As a product maker, you can imagine, I also love making products. So um, that sounds really, really great. How can people find out more about those classes and get all signed up because this is going to be available to all of our listeners. Yeah, absolutely. So you can go to the website and you can just type in the make your own product series or just make your own and it'll pull it up and so you can get registered there. um, The website. Tell me about that. 
Yeah. So the <laughs> website is the herb shop and that's S H O P P E pdx.com. Um, and so you can go on there soon. It'll also be linked onto our event page, but you can go to the search bar under um, our shop page and also find it there. Or you can call the shop and we can get you signed up that way or email again, kind of whatever, whatever method works best for you, we can definitely accommodate. Um, and, and until the end of July, it's on, it's a hundred dollars off. So Ooh, nice. if you're going to get signed up and save some money, that would be the, the, the ideal time to do that is to get signed up before July. And who doesn't love July. saving money? Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, everybody. <laughs> right, right. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I hope, uh, I hope some people dig in on that. Cause I know that's going to be a really, really fun, fun series. It is, you know, and we'll send the information in advance too. So if people want to buy it and make it with us, then that is also a really fun way nice. to do that. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Sounds really great. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. We're going to start wrapping it up, but I want to know, is there anything, any like really great words of wisdom you would care to share or think is important? You don't have to say yes, um, that you would want to share with somebody who's just beginning their journey down the herbalist path. Yeah. I mean, I think that um, follow your dreams and listen to your intuition are probably the, the key statements in herbalism because the more we do that, the more in tune we become with our true path and where we're supposed to be. Um, so don't ever let anybody tell you you can't do that because that is, you know, th- then you're denying yourself, you know, you're denying your own path. And like many of us, you know, we've all denied our own path for years until we land on that path. And then all of a sudden we're like, Oh, why is, why are all the doors <laughs> opening up? And like, why does this, this make feel right? so much sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, so no matter how much knowledge you have or don't have with what your guides and your intuition are telling you, follow it and don't let anybody stop you. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> love that. Love, 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 love that. That's great. Um, cool. Thank you for joining me for this. Absolutely. One more time, I want you to let everybody know how they can find you, whether it's your website, your social media, or what have you. Absolutely. So you can definitely visit us in person at 3912 North Mississippi Avenue here in Portland. Um, Or you can go to our website, which is theherbshoppdx.com and shop is Um, (laughs) S-H-O-P-P-E. And you can see the majority of what we have. We don't have CBD on there yet, but you can definitely see the, the majority of our products and events and practitioners and things like that online. Um, or you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram um, and see all the greatness that's coming out. So heck yeah. And then Facebook, Instagram is at the herb shop. It's the mm-hmm. herb shop PDX, I believe. We just nice. kind of changed that. So yeah, cool. We'll link to it in the show notes, no matter what, okay. but some people don't want to look at our show notes and just hear it. And they're smart enough to yeah. remember it. I'm and- pretty sure they're both <laughs> herb shop PDX at this point. So <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I've had to go through numerous changes in that department. Like, Oh wait, that one's not so easy. Yeah. <laughs> um, the lessons we learn as business owners and herbalists and humans. <laughs> yes, exactly. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amanda. for yeah, joining Thank me. you for having me. And I hope you have a brilliant day. You too. Bye. So if you love learning this kind of stuff, join me over in my Facebook group, The Herbalist Path. You can tune into my podcast, The Herbalist Path. And yeah, here's to making much more great medicine. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button if you like the video and share it with your friends so that together we can make herbalism spread like wildflowers. Bye.